currently um, on our YouTube. Um, but with that, I'm going to turn things over to Nancy. Good morning. Um, am I, it's, am I, okay. Daryl, am I good? Yep, it is up now. I see the DLIS slide. Okay, very good. Good morning, everybody. I'm Nancy Gidry Hall, the State Data Coordinator um, here at the Florida Division of Library and Information Services. And I have been the SDC only since February of this year, so this is my first round of the annual statistical report. Um, oh, so please bear with me. Um, the purpose of this webinar is to cover uh, this year's data collection from Florida Public Libraries. And I understand that there are a number of new directors this year, so it'll be all new to some of you, and there are a few changes for everybody. Um, I'm gonna start by briefly going over why this is necessary. And I wanna go into detail about a couple of sections in this year's annual statistical report. And then even more detail about a few changes to um, this year's supplemental survey. And I will talk some about what is hopefully going to be next year's version of the annual statistical report. Why do we do this and why are we asking you to share all of this information? Um, at the local level, tracking statistics show decision makers both your accomplishments sorry, and your needs. And it's extremely important important at the state level that we have this data for a number of reasons for libraries in addition to tracking what your own library is doing every year it's helpful to compare your metrics to other libraries in your area or those of similar sizes across the state and to this end um, i want to point out that we publish the statewide data on our website and all of the data that we collect is ultimately available online. In fact, the 2020 tables that have just been posted as of today, um, they're on our new and improved website. And I think Daryl's putting in the, uh, the link to that new web page for us. Um, at the national level, what this boils down to is that we are required to provide this information, which is why we require you to report it to us. The Institute of Museum and Library Services uh, also publishes this data from the nationwide collections by state and territory. You can find it at imls.gov. Um, all of our state data ends up in what they refer to as the public, li uh, public library survey. It takes them a couple of years to publish. I believe they just put out the 2019 tables late this summer. Um, I've looked over what they publish and I find it very interesting to see how Florida compares to the other states in a wide range of indicators. And the, the one big conclusion I've come to is that Florida libraries do more with less than a lot of other states. I'll give you a few examples. Um, from the 2019 data, for total operating revenue per capita, Florida ranks 39. We rank 50 out of 51 in operating expenditures per capita for staff salaries and benefits yet uh, we rank number 10 in percentage of librarians with an MLS degree. We rank number 16 in registered users per capita, number five for reference transactions, and we were number two in the number of public access internet computers available. So good job, Florida librarians. Are there any questions at this point about the reasons behind the survey?
No, okay. Um, so this year's annual statistic report, statistical report, what are we looking at? It is in fact the same as it was last year and I believe the year before that. Um, this is because the survey is mandated by grant rules and we can't just pop new questions in or make changes as needed. The whole thing has to go through legal processes. And the changes that were planned last year for this year did not make it through those processes. So the ASR will be exactly the same as it was last year. And that's not necessarily a bad thing and I'll get into that a little later. Um, it's still in counting opinions that's our survey instrument. We'll take a quick look at that for all the new directors in just a minute. I do wanna talk a bit about two sections in the survey. The first part I'll go over is, is the circulation section and also counting programs. Last year, Dolly and Claudia went into detail about counting programs in a webinar that's still available on our the statistics webpage. And I'm gonna repeat a little bit of what they explained and this is because the programming section is very important and we want to make sure that you get full credit for all of, all of your efforts this past year. Uh, so most of you, excuse me, most of you will be familiar with the instrument we use. Uh, if you are new and have not yet received the credentials to log in, let me know. I, uh, you should have got them on Friday. I sent two separate messages out with your credentials to all directors. This is this is what the first page looks like after you log in and it'll take you to the surveys. You can either hit the enter button and that'll take you to the main survey or you can click on the links. This is what the ASR looks like once you get in. It's pretty straightforward. You should see last year's values for most items. Um, when you get to the bottom of the survey, make sure you save and submit it. You can save it along the way and revisit it as you need to, but just make sure you submit it once you're finished. After you do that, there's a link to the supplemental here at the bottom, or you can go back to the main page to complete the supplemental. And now I'm going to go into detail, a little detail about um, the circulation section. Um, when I started earlier this year, all the data for last year was already submitted and in the system, um, I had to submit it, the final data to the IMLS and they have a lot of edit checks to get through before the data is accepted. And this section was the most difficult to reconcile by far. And I'm gonna share with you why that is. The instructions, they're not the best about, uh, about what should equal what and what item is a subset of another. Um, some of these, uh, the ones that are in gray are auto sums, so you can't enter values there. And I mean, you can see that physical item circulation is a subset and of the total annual circulation, but it doesn't, there's no check in there. Um, and, and some, oh, I just want to explain that some items should add up to the same amount. And so in the case of number 81, the total annual circulation of materials, yeah, um, adult materials and youth materials is the auto sum but that also is supposed to equal physical item circulation and use of electronic materials. Um, there, in reality, you can put any number in here because there's not, it's not a, there's no check on it. And I think, I think the difficulty for this part is breaking out age categories on electronic materials. If you can't do this, uh, don't stress about it. Just credit the total to adult materials by default. Uh, I would suggest that you actually start with physical item circulation and use the electronic materials 
uh, I'm sorry, start with the physical item circulation and the use of electronic materials. And then if you have an age breakdown, subtract what you know is child or youth from the total and put that in adult materials and everything should balance out. Um, going down this section, uh, total collection use, number 86, that's an auto sum of total annual circulation of materials, physical item circulation, and the use of electronic materials. And it's, it, it, this seems to be problematic. Uh, total electronic content use breaks down as use of electronic materials and the successful retrieval of electronic information. And the problem element here is successful retrieval of electronic information. This is defined as views or downloads that require user authentication, but do not have a checkout period. And this seems not to be collected or reported by almost half of libraries. It may not be possible to collect it from some sources, and it's definitely a gray area in some cases, whether something is downloaded or viewed or checked out. I can't really speak to everyone's situation for, for this data point, but if you are using the Florida Electronic Library, that data is available uh, through the Gale dashboard. And I am going to have Dolly explain this because the FL FEL is her baby. Dolly? Hi. Hi, Nancy. Thank you. Can <laughs> everyone hear me? You can hear me? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So if you are, and I've been throwing a couple things into the chat. Um, and so one of the one of the things that I threw in is that if you are using vendors other than the Florida Electronic Library, you'll have to use a vendor report. So if you're using EBSCO or some of the other um, JSTOR, some of the other uh, vendors out there, you'll have to get the information from them. If you're using the Florida Electronic Library, we have a great dashboard for you. Um, now I am showing my login credentials, but each one of you will have your own because each of you has your very own um, circulation statistics. And so in order to get them, you'll have to log in using your own uh, username and password. If you don't know what that is, you can let me know, or you can contact Gale Support with that, um, with a question and they can help you there. Um, next slide, please. All right, so once you log in, and I've and I've stolen the uh, screenshot of uh, my local library here in Leon County, um, and you'll see at the top that you uh, have choices. You can you can choose your uh, year, so you'll put you'll throw in your year from, uh, and and I took this screenshot um, before the end of October. <laughs> Um, actually before the end of September, so I only could get up through August, but you, you can get to September now. We've updated it um, because we're now in October. So you, you put in your year and you can, you can pull it, and if you um, scroll down, and I'm going to have you change the slide, there you are. You've got your retrievals. So this is, this is for the, in, in this case, this is not quite the whole year, but you can put it in now for the whole year and you can get your retrievals and that is going to be your FEL um, information that you'll throw in. But then if you also are using EBSCO or JSTOR or any of the other great um, databases that are out there, you'll need to add them together. And um, it's retrievals would be, um, the pulling pulling out. So in some cases, retrievals are counted as downloads. Some cases they're counted even as just viewing them on the screen. Each vendor might have a slightly different way of reporting that. Um, and I see a question in the chat from Vicki. It says successful retrieval of 
uh, electronic information on my county downloads or page views from the FEL and databases to which we subscribe, such as Book Browse, Help Now, Job Now, Transparent Language, Universal Class. There's no other place to document use of these valued and expensive resources since nothing is checked out. And checked out is exactly um, what you do for your circulating materials. So your use of electronic resources are the ones that aren't checked out. Just exactly, Vicki, you're absolutely right. Um, and so if you are reporting the electronic resources um, in your purchases, then you would report them here for sure in your um, adding adding them together here in your mm. your successful retrieval of information. And you and the thing is is that when you take a look at the web pages or I'm sorry, I'm gonna read exactly what you said, Vicki. Um, the page views. So if it's the page view of the resource um, rather than a page view page view of the website. Does that, if that makes sense? So, for example, if somebody goes in and opens up um, a class and is reading the class online, then that would definitely be a page view um, if that's the way they're reported. But it wouldn't be like clicks on the website. Like, how do I get to the website? Click on the thing. That doesn't count. Am I making sense, Vicki? Right. Yeah. Now, um, in Book Browse, Vicky, let me let me see if I have this right. Book Browse does not have a circulation period. It has just they can use it any time for as often as they want for as long as they want. Yes. Okay. So yeah. So it would be uh, reading the the book review within Book Browse. Then that would be correct. Yep. That would count. And I think that's my last slide. Does anyone else have questions about retrieval of information? Again, if you have some challenges getting in, let me know and we can get your password. Um, it's a really nice database. And I will say, I'm going to throw in a little thing. If you're interested in other things in here, there's lots of reports that you can play in. Um, you can take a look and see what people are searching for. So there's, there's really wonderful um, reports and information that really, the ebooks that people are using and uh, you can get more than just the number of retrievals you can actually see what what people are using and how they're using them the search terms they're putting in if you're interested in that kind of thing all right any any okay. other questions all right if, thanks let so me much know Sally. Mm -hmm. thanks i really appreciate that and we'll have her information at the at the end as well, in case you didn't get it. Um, all right, well, let's talk about programs for a bit. Uh, we're asking you for program information in two places again this year. Uh, the ASR program questions are very simple, basic. It's just programs broken down by age. Uh, this is a screenshot of the programs section in the ASR, and I need to point out that the definition that's in the instructions um, is not really accurate. And that's what I need to talk about. It says, no, <clears throat> excuse me, it says nothing about counting virtual presentations of programs. As I explained, we are constrained from even changing the language and the instructions until it's approved. But we most definitely want live virtual programs and participants included here. The online instructions do a fairly thorough job of explaining, uh, you know, basically what is meant by a program. It just doesn't explicitly include the virtual aspect. Um, so to be clear, what you're being asked for here, a program is defined as any planned event for a group that's implemented, sponsored, or co-sponsored by your library. And this can include programs conducted by vendors that you hire. They can be held in person or virtually, but they must be held in real time. For virtual, this means live streaming. And live streaming is just what it sounds like. This is not a recording of something that was done earlier, although you can record things and post them later, but we'll get to that. Um, how do you count live streaming? 
you're counting each view with a duration of a minute or more as one viewer attendee. And I want to add uh, when you need to count live streaming attendance, it's best to capture it as soon as the stream ends because some platforms only retain for a limited time. It's kind of hard to go back after the fact and find things. Any questions about uh, the ASR before we dive into the supplemental survey? Uh, Nancy, Matthew had a yes. question about, about I think like the earlier section. He said, are those ranking highlights posted somewhere? It would be great for me to share those with my staff. They are in they are in the IMLS uh, data that's posted on the IMLS.org. Okay, and then Nicole asks, does Zoom count for this? I guess the uh, Zoom. Cover. Oh, for yeah. oh for virtual for virtual right. programs. Oh, certainly. If you're holding your if you're holding your virtual programs through Zoom, certainly. Okay, and then Tara says, so we don't count views that come later? That's, that's, we're getting to that in the supplemental, but for, there's, there's two places where I'm sorry, sorry to say this again, um, but we're asking you again to count, count your programs twice. So there's, there's the section in the ASR where it's just asking for live programs, whether they're in person or virtual. And then in the supplemental, um, there's there's a place for the recorded uh, views on programs. Okay. And um, Hope says that they would like to hear more about recorded programs that are re released later. And then uh, Tara also says, um, as follow up, what about self-directed programs like a video that we post and people watch later? That's that's recorded in the. I mean, it's it's documented in the supplemental survey, and. As I said, uh, Dolly and Claudia, they did a really good webinar last year because, because last year all the supplemental programming uh, questions were new and they explained that in detail. I'm gonna go over it just a little bit, but, uh, but not, not in the greatest detail that they did. Okay, uh, Michaela says, so the supplemental survey will be asking for our passive programs, such as summer reading programs, reading challenges, et cetera? Yes. Yeah, so I'll, I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting there in just a, in just a, a minute. Um, so the, uh, you know, as I said that, again, there's a, there's a supplemental survey because we couldn't change the, annual statistical report um, and it's it's a little bit different not not a, not a lot but it's there's a little bit of difference in it and the re, uh, the reason we had to do this is because of last year there were so many libraries that had to rethink all services that they provided to their communities and and we would need to know the details of those efforts so last year this was put in the supplemental survey, the expanded definitions of programs, and also some economic impact questions about, oh, we're asking for percentages of expenses and income that were in state. We wanna to continue to collect that annually going forward. Um, the IMLS also added questions last year, which I'll refer to as emergency services. And that somewhat shortened section remains this year, but it's mostly it's mostly all about the programs. Um, we, meaning the Florida Division of Library and Information Services, expanded the definitions of programs last year to include virtual programs and also to record self-directed programs. Interestingly, the IMLS has now, in just the past year, actually over the summer they added a large number of data points to also capture different categories of programs um, so florida was actually ahead of the curve on that now some states are able to to add the you know add add it immediately to their surveys but we can't do that uh, but this 
addition from them, it, it actually works out for our purposes because maybe next year this will all be incorporated into the annual statistical report. Most, most of the new things that they added this year, the new data points, we were able to map to what we already had from last year, if that makes any sense. So we're not change, we are not changing the categories you see now or how you count them. Um, but I did have to add a few things to the supplemental survey this year to capture some of the divisions that they added, and this is what is changing. Um, for totals in the active in-person programs only, they are asking for uh, the number of on-site and off-site, meaning at your library or somewhere else. And for children's programs, in the active, in-person and virtual categories also, they <laughs> split the, uh, the age definitions into two. And I, I wanna talk about the timing of this for a minute. And um, we're springing this on you after the physical years ended. So of course you haven't been counting these categories, but you can look at this as an introduction to what we need for next year. If you have it, that's fantastic. But if, if you don't, don't stress about it. The IMLS, I promise, they're gonna keep making changes to the performance indicators, but they don't, they don't actually require reporting from us on the new data points for a year or two. So this is kind of the introduction to what we want to collect next year. And as I say, if, if, you can, if you can break, break it down, that's fantastic. Um, but you know, don't, don't feel like we're saying, you have to give us this information this year because this, is, this would be the first time we've asked for it. Um, so in the supplemental survey, the way the programs are set up, you've okay, so you've already put your program totals in the annual statistical report uh, to collect in-person and virtual live programs. And how does that relate for what, what we're asking for here in the supplemental? Um, there's, there's the total active programs, and that's an auto sum of the uh, in-person and the virtual. Those two sections should add up to be the same as what's in the ASR. And again, you know, I, I realize we're asking you many times to put this information in, but it it should equal what's in the ASR. Now, they're not connected, so nothing's gonna explode if they don't add up, but they should be the same. And then there's also the sections for, um, sorry, for self-directed in-person programs and self-directed virtual programs. And those are separate from anything that's collected in the ASR this year. But the, the IMLS is collecting that information as well. So that's, that's all good, actually. It's all very good, I think. All right, the next section is about the uh, economic impact for Florida. And we're asking for this again. Last last year, it was asking for two years. Uh, this is just this current year that we're asking for. And it's very important for us to track this so we can document the economic impact of libraries in the state. We actually have a report coming out later this year of, that the University of Florida's Bureau of Economic and Business Research did for us using that very data collected last year. And we'll be publishing some interesting findings from that study before too long. Um, under the in-state expenditures, we're asking for a percentage of print materials, electronic materials, uh, and other operating expenditures, and also for capital outlay. And here, you know, if you, you know that the vendors are headquartered in Florida, that's where you'd report the percentage 
of your expenditures for that. Um, electronic materials are most likely not in-state, pardon me, unless you're purchasing them through your local MLC. Oh, in that particular case, they are in essence um, acting as an in-state vendor. Um, most likely your utilities are based in Florida and most of the construction should be, well, so some of it will be locally based. And we're just looking for estimates here, just percentages. We're, we don't expect you to work out exact figures. The other section in the supplemental survey are straight from the IMLS. And some of these questions you saw last year in the section, um, some of them have been removed, um, so it's a little smaller. We still wanna know what services you had or added uh, with a fiscal year that we're covering. I'm sure there are many locations still experiencing special circumstances, and that's where we wanna collect this. Uh, I, I'm calling this the emergency services section, but actually that's plus a couple random IMLS reporting method questions, which have absolutely nothing to do with COVID, but they added these in last year. And these, these particular data points about uh, library visits reporting methods and reference transaction reporting methods, those are gonna be put into their proper sections in the annual statistical report next year, but there was really just no good place to put them. Any questions about the supplemental? So Peter asked, are we counting podcast listens? Podcast listens. As, as programs? No. Um. Matthew asks, so young adult is ages 12 to 17? Yes, yes, the youth, I mean, I'm sorry, the, uh, sorry, the ch children's programs breakdown is zero to five and then six to 11 and then so youth is 12 to 17. Okay. Uh, Vicki asks, so for in-state expenditures, it's all about who gets the check from the library, not the ultimate producer? It depends on the situation. Um, like I said, the if you're getting um, sorry, if if you're getting um, electronic material, if you're purchasing that through the MLC, in that particular instance, you'd count it as in-state. But m other than them, most of the uh, services are are not going to be in state there's some i mean there's some publishers in florida uh, but it's where it, it's where it's ultimately coming from except in the case of the mlc's is my understanding dolly you can jump in there, there if you have a If you're with yes. me. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. I, it took me a second <laughs> to find my mute button. Um, yeah. So, so what we're doing is we're, I know that several of the MLCs have sort of a group purchasing option where they will help libraries get um, overdrive, for example, or other, uh, other resources, other electronic resources. And so if you're sending the check to the MLC, then yes. We're going to consider those to be in state um, because it's the local. It's a local. It's a local group. And then, um, but if you're if you're sending it straight to OverDrive, or if you're sending it out to um, you know some of the other vendors that are that are out there, Gale, for example, then then it would be um, yeah. So like the Nephlin OverDrive group, exactly, Renee. Correct. So yeah, we're considering those to be in in state. Um, because you're writing the check to a local group and supporting their services that help are helping to get services into the hands of your your patrons. Hmm. Now I'm looking at the 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 podcast series, 
So the thing with the podcast, the, are, they, are they recorded as a podcast or are they, for example, another thing that might be a video that has the, the audio pulled out and thrown up? Or is it, is it by itself as recorded as a podcast? Yeah, that would, that would, I would say that would be a, a, a self-directed virtual. Yep, I would say that would be correct. I'm jumping in here. I'm going to. No, gonna, no, please, please, because yeah. I was thinking about that. And but, but, yeah. um, if if it was if it was created as a for the purpose of being a program, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And now, now, Dolly, if, Dolly explains this in, I guess, in detail in last year's uh, uh, webinar. Yeah, we don't necessarily get into every single thing. I do know that. So, for example, if you if you are supplying for and i'm just going to make it up if you've got spotify on your website and people are listening to the npr podcast i don't think i would call it a, a program that you're providing yes it's a service but i'm not sure mm -hmm. that it's the same but if you guys are recording the podcast and putting it up then absolutely that's a program okay uh, amy asks how are you slash they defining during covid <laughs> the, the IMLS. Well, if if you are if you are having to uh, you know provide special services, big. Well, it's still. It, I, I I'm assuming it still is during COVID. If if you have outside services, for instance, if you're doing that because people don't want to come into the building. I would say that counts. Um, I mean, I, I don't know that they ever provided us with a time frame for this. They just said, well, we're, we're asking these same questions again. I mean, do you have a, do you have something particular in mind that you're thinking of and what, if it qualifies as, Yeah, I'm afraid so, Dolly. Yeah, it's technically still going on. Uh, Amy, so like curbside, okay. for example, um, they're going to continue that regardless of COVID. Well, I, I would say yes. I mean, and I can't tell you how long these questions are going to be in the survey. Um, I, I'll talk about that in a, in a bit, but as far as I know, you know, they ask us to to uh, put this particular, you know, these particular questions in the survey again this year. So I don't know. I don't know how long they intend to uh, keep asking them. I certainly hope it doesn't last up, you know, through another year, but we will see. Uh, Amy also says we're planning. We are planning on hybrid programs that will be in person and live streamed. How mm -hmm. should that be counted? You would you would be counting the uh, you'd be counting them twice in essence, um, or you'd be counting the participants in whatever circumstance they're in. Whatever if you have in person attendance you'd count that as the in-person and if you have them online they'd count as virtual okay. and i think we've answered a lot of the podcast questions but if not um whoever has any questions but it's still the podcast you can put them in the chat of course again um but hope says you've mentioned more information on programs by dolly for those mm -hmm. that were not able at the time to see this where do we find this information it is on our website that and can you put that link in there? It's it's on the main statistical website, um, which di just did change. If anybody had it bookmarked, we have a new, uh, there's a new link to our site. Thank you, Daryl. Uh, Mary says, when we report funds spent on materials, can we include the platform fees or is it just what we are spending on individually purchased titles? Uh, Dolly, I, I'll defer to you on that. 
platform fees. Yeah, um, yeah, no. If you're if you're also if you also have to do a platform fee, especially if it's an annual fee and you have to do it like if you did it once for five years, probably not. But if you have to pay it every year, then yes, absolutely. It's all part of the cost of being mm -hmm. able to make your services available. Okay. Um, I think that this next one's a question for you, Daryl. Does the chat? Oh, the yeah, Janice, if I need to go back and review the recordings, the chat with the links show up as well. Um, Nancy, you'll be sending out the uh, the email, right? That will have it, and I can send with the uh, recording so I can have the chat log in it as well. Okay, okay, just yeah, I can do that. Okay. Okay. Um, in this this part, because I, I, I'm moving on to a different section, but first um, I want to briefly mention something that's that was at the end of the uh, supplemental survey because I was asked about this earlier. Um, at the bottom of the supplemental surveys, IMLS sections section, um, it asked if an outlet was closed due to COVID, and if so. Uh, below it, that, it asks the number of weeks an outlet closed due to COVID and the number of weeks with limited occupancy. And by their own definition, the IMLS, they say a building can be physically closed but still offer virtual Wi-Fi or curbside services outside the building. Um, so when you're looking at your service hours, a library might be counted as closed for a certain number of weeks, but still have service hours during those weeks. So service hours is the number of hours an outlet provided services to the public and weeks open or the weeks pub the public could actually enter the building. Um, the weeks with a limited occupancy are a subset of weeks open and weeks closed that means closed to the public but you could still be providing services so um, the weeks open plus weeks closed should equal 52. And hey, Nancy yes yeah. is there a slide for that there is not no I just oh, okay. you know what I added <laughs> I actually added this yesterday okay. because my bad. Uh, somebody had asked me about that cert the uh, service hours in you know in relation to the weeks open and weeks closed so but if you have questions about that please you can contact me so next year um this is this is what we hope and this is already in progress so it it's definitely our goal to have a single survey uh, we certainly hope it can be approved for next year. And uh, again, I want to point out that the ASR is going to continue to change, especially especially in the last year or so. And I see things uh, in the in the near future uh, where that they're going to keep handing to us and say we need to collect this now. And there's whole sections that that are have been proposed and we're trying to keep the size down because it's you can't just have two big surveys and ask everybody to do it every year but there's you know with the increase in numbers of elements from the national level uh, and we added a few i just want to i just want to say it's important for us to all document what's being done uh, to serve your communities and I, I know it's a lot, it's a big ask, but luckily, especially in the, in light of the programs, they were gonna ask this anyway. <laughs> and we, I think it was a very good circum, lucky, lucky circumstances that um, Florida need, you know, decided to ask this themselves before, before we were, asked to do it by the IMLS. Um, in the, uh, you know, in the, let me call it just a combination next year when we combine what we have in the supplemental 
with the annual statistical report, uh, the programs will be the same four section breakdown uh, with the with the added distinctions that are <clears throat> excuse me in in the location of live programs and in the children's ages groups. Uh, we're going to leave in the economic impact questions, but they'll be incorporated into their respective income and expenditure sections, so they won't be sticking out by themselves. We're for next year. We're also putting in a couple of new IMLS questions, in addition to the ones I mentioned earlier um, about the library visits and reference transaction reporting methods. Uh, they have added, and we decided not to put them in the supplemental this year, they've also added other circulating physical items into collections and the corresponding circulation of other physical items into my favorite section. And th this is a good thing, really, because it's to cover everything you have available for patrons that don't fit into the other categories. You know, things like uh, cake pens and bicycles and telescopes. It's, it gives you a way to count everything that gets circulated. So I think that's a good thing. There's also a couple of data points, <clears throat> excuse me, that, that I, I have to admit I had a hand in because I see that the IMLS is, they, is talking about doing this, but they have not adopted it yet. Um, one is about late fees. And I, I just I pushed up for this one because we really want to know um, and but I, I anticipate that they're going to ask us to do this next year. But so next year there'll be one about late fees. It's uh, phrased as does your library charge ever do fines to users when they fail to return physical materials on or before the due date? And the possible answers are yes, yes for some items, and no, we do not charge late fees. Um, the other one I can think of is. Uh, about splitting current print serial materials. And this is being split into circulating and non-circulating uh, print serial subscriptions, which is, is necessary to make the physical circulation totals accurate. Um, the plan for next year is, is not to have a supplemental survey except in the event that a library experiences closures due to emergencies. Um, the plan is to have at the bottom of this new ASR just a link to uh, like a special supplemental survey for those circumstances. And I, I really hope no one has the occasion to use that. For this year, if you did experience a non-COVID emergency closure, if you could please document that in the outlet level section under weeks open, just put a note in there. That would be great because we do we do make note of these things. Um, I, that's all for this year. If you're new to this game, there uh, again the webinar uh, from Dolly and Claudia last year addresses details on counting programs and attendance. And that's on our statistics webpage. And I'll make sure you get that because like I say, we just did have an update on our website. So if you had that bookmark before, you, you won't get there unless you go through the main, um, main bureau page. If you need help with the Gale dashboard or anything else related to the FEL, please contact Dolly. Um, that's my contact information, and please contact me if you have any concerns, um, and there's Dolly's contact inf information. Are there any more questions? So Mary asked, could you reiterate those stats that you gave at the beginning of the webinar where Florida ranks 49th in funding? Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> Let me find that. Yeah, I was just I was pulling some of the uh, the pithier uh, pithier statistics out of the IMLS data. Um, what I what I pulled is that for um, 
total operating revenue per capita, we rank number 39. And we're number 50, and there's 51 ranks because they count uh, DC in there. We're ranked number 50 in operating expenditures for staff salaries and benefits. Okay, and then and Joyce asks, oh, sorry, go ahead. Jane says, Nancy? Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I thought you were saying something, sorry. Um, but um, Joyce asks, what if you charge late fees for only hotspots and laptops? Well, that would be, yes, we charge for some things. And you can always, uh, you know, it'd be helpful to us if you put a note in there as well to say that. Um, Matthew says, any discussion of a new value of Florida Library reports slash brochure what tax dollars are getting used for residents it won't be exactly like that because what we did this time is an economic impact study instead of return on investment but i am we just we just did get a, a draft um from the uh, university of florida um on the economic impact and we're looking at pulling out some you know Use, useful statistics from that. Uh, it, is, it is a pretty good report. So yes, we're gonna we'll be publishing something like that soon. And there's a, there's another site that I need to look into uh, that talks about specifics about um, return on investment for excuse me for library uh, patrons. And Jessica asks, can you show the slide of the programming statistics again? Programming statistics. Uh, hang on. So the, the breakdown of kids and on site, I think. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for it on my. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna zip through. This one, this one. Or are you talking about the age groups? Uh, age, age groups. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Nope. Sorry. I. I'll get there. There we go. Whoops. This one. Okay. Um Looks like the questions are winding down. Um, okay. So we'll, we'll stick around for a few more minutes to answer any questions. Um, and as a reminder, this is recorded and will be up on our YouTube page a little later. Okay, any other questions? Okay. Thank 